Hello, Matthews Gatos here. Welcome to Perfect Squares, Perfect Cubes, and Their Roots. Let's get started. So let's talk about perfect squares. Perfect squares are any number with two identical factors. For example, 16 is a perfect square because 4 times 4, there's your two identical factors, equals 16. So we can say that 4 squared equals 16. Now pictorially, a perfect square is the area of a square given its side length. For example, if I gave you the side length is 3, you can see that 3 by 3, 3 times 3 is 9. So you could say 3 squared is 9. Let's talk about how we can find the perfect squares. So tips to finding perfect squares, aside from using your calculator, is the numbers on a diagonal of a times table. Now all those numbers on the main diagonal are perfect squares because they have two identical factors. So all of those pink numbers there would be perfect squares. My eyes immediately go to my perfect square, which is 25. And the reason that's my favorite perfect square is because 5 times 5 is 25, and 5 is the best number ever. So I would recommend, at minimum, knowing your times tables up to 10 times 10, especially those numbers on the main diagonal. It will really help you. So that's what a square is. Let's talk about square roots. So if a square is two identical factors that multiply to another, a square root is one of those two identical factors. So for example, 4 is the square root of 16 since 4 times 4 is 16. We can therefore say the square root of 16 equals 4. Now pictorially what that means is the side length of a square given its area. So for example, if I gave you here that the area altogether is 9, I know that the square root of 9 is 3 because the side length is 3. So let's talk about how we can figure out squares and square roots, how they're related together. They're actually inverse operations to one another. So let's start with this fact that we know and we can agree to be true. 4 times 4 is 16. Well, if I look at it in this direction here, 4 times 4 is 16, that's squaring 4. 4 squared is 16. If I want to go backwards, which is what an inverse operation is, I can say that going backwards, 16, the square root of 16 is 4. That would be square rooting. So they are inverse operations to one another. Let's talk about how we can find square roots. We can use our factors to help us find our square roots. So what I want you to do, aside from using the calculator, let's try this without the calculator first. I want you to factor the number so it can be divided into equal groups of factors. You don't have to go all the way down to the prime factorization, just until you're at the point where you can comfortably say equal number of factors in this group, equal number of factors in this group, because the square root is one of those identical factors. Now to find your factors, I recommend you use a factor tree or short division, which I'm going to show you in this video, to help you find those factors. So let's try an example. I want to do the square root of 484. So I notice that 484 is an even number. So I'm going to start with my short division, just dividing 2 by 484. So 484, sorry, divided by 2 is 242. Now, I can't think of my two identical factors yet, so I'm going to divide it by 2 again. So half of 242 is 121. Now I'm at a point where I know what my factors are. So 121 is the same as 11 times 11. So I can split this into two equal groups. So I can say that 484 is 2 times 11 multiplied by 2 times 11. So I have one of each of those factors, which means 484 is 2 times 11 is 22 times 22. So now that I know the two equal factors, I can say that the square root of 484 is one of those two identical factors, 22. Well, how would this look in a word problem? For example, what is the side length of a square with an area of 144 meters squared? So my tip to you is, if area of a square is side length squared, because it's a square and they're the same, then I can say that side length is equal to the square root of the area. So that means that my side length will equal to the square root of 144 meters squared. 
Now, some of you might already know what those two identical factors are, but if you don't, that's okay. Let's just do some short division on the side to break it down to a point where we can all see for sure what those two identical groups are. So I took half of 144 is 72, half of 72 is 36, and now I can comfortably say 6 times 6 is 36. So I know that 144, splitting it into two equal groups, is 2 times 6 and 2 times 6. So 144 is 2 times 6 is 12, times 2 times 6 is 12. Therefore, I know, there's my two identical factors, I know that the square root of 144 is equal to 12. So my side length, square root of 144, is 12, and let's put some units on there, meters. Okay, that's squares and square roots. Let's look at cubes. So a perfect cube is a number with three identical factors. So for example, if 4 times 4 times 4 is 64, 64 is a perfect cube because it has three identical factors. We can say that 4 cubed is 64. Pictorially, what this would mean is the volume of a cube, if you're given that, finding the side length. So for example, if we look at here, you can see that the length of 3 times the width of 3 times the height of 3 is 27. So the volume is 27 because 3 cubed is 27. The cube root, going backwards, the cube root is one of three identical factors. So back to that example of 64, since 4 times 4 times 4 is 64, I can say the cube root of 64 is 4, which is just one of those factors. Pictorially, this would mean finding the side length given the volume. So if I'm given the volume is 8, so I see that there are 8 little cubes there, I'm just looking for the side length, which I can see is 2 by 2 by 2. Therefore, I know the cube root of 8 is 2. Well, similar to squaring, cubing and cube rooting are inverse operations. They undo each other. So let's go to our example, 4 times 4 times 4 is equal to 64. So based on that, I can say that 4 cubed is 64. And then I can undo that, go backwards, by saying that the cube root of 64 is 4. So let's look at how do we do cube roots. Similar to square rooting, we're going to factor the number just until we can see that it can be divided into three equal groups. Once we've done that, the cube root is one of those three identical factors. Let's try an example. So I want to evaluate the cube root of 216. So I'm going to divide by 2 because I know it's an even number. So I take 2. Or sorry, I take 216 and I'm going to divide that by 2 and I get 108. Then I'm going to divide that by 2 and I'll get 54. I'm going to do it for sure one more time because it's a cube root, so I want to do everything three times, which is 27. Ah, now I'm at a point where I can recognize that 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. So 216 split into three equal groups. I'm going to need a 2 and a 3 in each of those groups. 2 times 3 and 2 times 3. So that means 216 is equal to 2 times 3 is 6, times 6 times 6. So the cube root of 216 is one of those identical factors, which would just be 6. Okay, let's look in terms of a word problem. So in this word problem here, I want to find the side length of a cube that has a volume of 512 centimeters cubed. So my tip for you is, if volume of a cube is side length cubed, then side length will be the cube root of volume. So I want to again use short division to break this down. So I notice that 512 is an even number, so I'll start with 2. So 512 divided by 2 is 256. Divide that by 2 is 128. And divide that by 2 is 64. Now it might be tempting to say 64 is 8 times 8, but remember we want a perfect cube, so we're looking for three identical factors, which would be 4 times 4 times 4. Okay, so putting this all together, 512 
three identical factors, a two and a four in each. And then I just multiply that together. So two times four is eight times eight times eight. So that means the cube root of 512 is one of those three identical factors, which would be eight. And because this is a word problem, I need to add on my units. So that tells me that my side length is eight centimeters. So that's a perfect squares and perfect cubes. Now I always say that math is found in the real world. It's also found in nature. And here we go, as evidenced by this picture, a square root. Get it? A root that's square. So if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It helps me reach more Mathies in need of help. So I hope this video helped and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.